Hey guys, Cameron here with Emerson Property Management. Every week I bring you tools, tactics, strategies, lessons I've learned, things, things that have helped me build up a sizable own portfolio in about two years and now manage that portfolio. Today, guys, I want to talk about vacancy and how listing your property at a high price can have an impact, has a direct impact on vacancy and what that means for your direct bottom line. I fa have found myself explaining this to owners and in many people actually, and it seems to really resonate once I put it in this form. So I just wanted to put this down, get this out here, share with you guys why one week of vacancy is not worth keeping the property an extra $25 a month. It's worth to drop it 25, get that thing leased a, a, a week early, um, it's not worth letting the property sit for an extra $100 or $200 a month. So I want to show you those exact numbers on an example here. And we're just going to walk through that. We'll, I'll talk through it. Um, and then uh, hopefully, hopefully this will, at the end of this, you'll realize, wow, I'd rather drop rent, not list too high, and get this property leased up very, very, very quickly. The quicker I get it leased, the more to my bottom line, the more money I'm going to make, and you know, the less, less risk you have as well. So let's get right into it. Here's all my numbers. So what does this mean? Well, the first number is $2,000. So $2,000 a month is the amount of, uh, I'm just gonna use as an average rental. So you might be sitting here going, well, mine's at 1,500 or 1,200 or whatever. You can do all the math. All the math works out the same, no matter what you do, you can do it percentages, but $2,000 a month rental. Now say we list this rental and we're not getting much traction. If you let that property sit for a week, you have lost $460, okay? Or $38 a month over the course of that, that uh, whole year. So that's over the course of 12, a 12 month lease, assuming that you're using a 12 month lease. For two weeks, that number's $923 or $77 a month. For a month, that's $2,000. Obviously you're missing the full month rent which is $167 a month. And obviously we never wanna see a property sit for two months, but if it does, over that course of that first 12 month lease, you're losing $333. That's a lot of cash flow. A lot of properties, especially if you're buying now in today's market, at the time of this recording is 2022, you're probably only cash flowing 150 to $300 a month. So you could have wipe out your whole cash flow in one year by letting that property sit for two months. So this is why you'll see folks buy a rental property, you know, want to lease it themselves, even though they're too busy, they don't understand how to take phone calls, they don't understand how to screen tenants. And I'm not saying don't do that. All I'm saying is, if you let a property sit for two months, you're going to lose $333. At the end of the year, when you look at your bank statement, or at that, that business account for the property and go, well, I don't have any money in there. You know, I'm making... The property's written at $2,000 a month. I'm supposed to be cash flowing $300 a month, but I'm only cash flowing, you know, I'm actually cash flowing negative $33 a month. This is why this vacancy is a secret killer. So when you lease or list a property for, when you list a property for lease, you want to make sure that if you can get a tenant to move in a week early, you're going to save yourself about $38 a month. Drop it 25 for them. Give them a, a break. If you can get somebody in there two weeks early, give them a $50 a month break. And you don't always have to do that. You don't always have to be in the middle. But if you're not gaining traction, this is why, this is exactly why, if you're one of our clients, that every seven to 10 days, depending upon how high we list it and what the market's doing, I guess seven to 14 days, we're dropping the price. If we don't see traction, we're dropping the price. Now it might be $25, it might be 50 bucks. But this is why, because the longer that property sits, the less and less cash flow you're gonna get over the course of the year. I mean, would you give up 50 bucks to make 77? You know, negotiate, don't be, you know, if somebody says, oh, they're a great tent, they're gonna be a month out, give them a $50 break if they move in two weeks ahead of time. Now, here's the other kicker here. This figure, does not include cutting the grass every week to two weeks. Does not include electric, gas, water. The longer that that property sits vacant, the more risk you have. 
to somebody to break in. It's actually, I was just speaking with an insurance broker about this recently. After 60 days, most insurance companies will require you to carry a different insurance policy that actually goes up because nobody's in there. What if a pipe bursts? What if, you know, there somebody breaks in and steals something? What if, you know, the house, uh, something sparks, a gas, the, the uh, igniter on the hot water tank goes and for some reason catches something on fire? Nobody's there to take care of any of this stuff. So your risk is also higher than this, which is why your insurance premium goes up. So while you're paying the mortgage, property taxes, insurance, utilities, taking care of the lawn and everything, that's just adding to this number. So add, you know, another few grass cuts here. Add another, you know, $25 to $35 a month, depending upon how many months vacant it is, to each of these numbers based on all the other things, the taxes, the insurance, you know, your PITI, your principal interest taxes and insurance, your, your other items you have to do to take care of the property. Um, I hope this was helpful. I really do because I found myself, you know, the market has been on a crazy tear. And when you watch this, the market might be on a crazy tear. It might not. I don't know. But we find ourselves trying to catch and ride that wave and, and increase the property rents and get the maximum amount of rent. And I am 100% for that. But it shouldn't come at the cost of waiting a week, two weeks, a month. We had an owner, he had the property vacant almost 90 days because we could not, he would not listen to us and, and drop the price. That, I didn't even have that figure on here. But could you imagine how much cash flow that is a month that he lost and he'll never get back? Keep this in the back of your head, y'all. I think I beat the dead horse on this. I hope you guys understand this. I hope this is clear. And I hope you now know why I take vacancy extremely seriously and you'll see us making moves very quickly to get applications and get people in to see this property and get this thing leased up and get these this number back in your pocket. Okay, y'all, I hope that was helpful. If it was, let me know. If it wasn't, let me know. I'll see y'all next week.